Hi, this is Don Schaffner, Distinguished Professor and Extension Specialist in the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences at Rutgers University. Today, I'm happy to bring you my thoughts on microbiological sampling part two as part of CONTACT's mini webinar series. In part two about microbiological sampling, and talking about sampling statistics, the first concept I want to introduce is that of the operating characteristics or OC curve. The OC curve shows the relationship between the percent of samples which have pathogens and the chance of detecting those pathogens. When we talk about sampling plans and OC curves, we use two terms, N, which represents the number of samples tested, and C, which represents the number of defects allowed. One popular plan is the N equals 60, C equals zero plan, often just referred to as an N60 plan. In the figure on the right, you can see the relationship between the probability of acceptance and the percent defective for two different plans. The N equals 60 plan is shown in blue and another plan which is often used for teaching purposes, which is the N equals 10 and C equals two plan. What you can see is that for a given percent defective, the N equals 60 plan is much more effective at rejecting those or not accepting those compared to the N equals 10 and C equals two plan. What you can also see is that as the value of N increases, the curve moves closer to the Y axis this is also true as the value of C decreases. So for high N and low C, we're very close to the y-axis. For lower N and higher C, we're further away from the y-axis. I wanna now talk about something which I refer to as intuitive statistics and to contrast that with what I will call correct statistics. Very often, when we try to use our intuition to think about probability and statistics, our intuition actually lets us down. This is why we need to use math and we need to use proper statistical approaches. For example, you may have heard that if one in 50 samples are positive per acre and you do an N equals 60 sampling plan, the chance of finding a positive is simply 60 divided by 150 or 40%. But this is not correct. You may have also heard that if you do an N equals 60 plan, and that's for half an acre, where you expect one in 75 samples to be positive, that you have an 80% chance of catching this problem. That's also not correct. And then finally, you may have heard that if you sample a quarter acre, where one in about 37 samples is positive and you use an N equals 60 sampling plan, your chance of finding that problem is 100%. And again, that's just simply not true. Let me explain why using the operating characteristics curve. What you can see here in the graph on the right is the relationship between intuitive statistics, which is shown in orange, and actual statistics shown in blue. The curve in blue is also represented by the N equals 60 OC curve. What you can see is that there's a pretty good agreement between the two plans at very low percent defectives. But as the number of defectives rises or as the percent defective rises, the curves depart from each other significantly. So let's again imagine a positive rate of one in 150 samples representing a full acre, the fraction positive there would be 70%. Our intuitive statistics would tell us that we have a 40% chance of catching the problem. It's actually not that good. It's only about a 33% chance of catching that problem, again, based on correct statistics. The one in 75 positive rate, which we might imagine would be true for a half acre, We've got 1.3% positive. Our intuitive statistics incorrectly tell us that we have an 80% chance of finding this problem. The actual chance of finding the problem is about 55%. But where it gets really interesting is in the last line of that table. 
where our positive rate is one in 37 and a half, representing a quarter acre, where 2.7% of the samples are positive. Here, our intuitive statistics tell us that since 60 divided by 37 is more than 100% or more than one, we will definitely always catch the problem. And actually, again, that's not true. We have about an 80% chance of catching the problem. But it's even more challenging than this. Again, especially if you think about assumptions that may be made. For example, you may have heard that product from 300 square feet of one field was responsible for causing the 2006 leafy greens outbreak. That fact may be true, but it's important to remember that if an acre has about 26,000 heads of romaine lettuce, that 300 square feet contains about 173 heads of romaine lettuce. If we're using the intuitive statistics approach, remember that all 173 heads have to be positive for that approach to work. But what happens if fewer than 173 heads are positive? Well, this is what happens. What you can see here is in the graph on the right, Again, this is the OC curve, that point at the far lower right corner of the graph, that represents a 2.7% defective rate, which has a probability of rejection of 81%. So it's not 100%, but it's still pretty good. It's 81%. But remember that that assumption relies on all of the heads of lettuce in that region being positive. Now, Let's say, for example, we don't have 173 heads positive. Let's cut that number in half. Only 87 heads of romaine are positive. Well, now our percent defective rate drops in half, and now we've only got a 56% chance of catching that problem. If we drop the number of heads further to 43, now it's only a 34% chance. With 22 heads positive, it's 18%. 11 heads positive, now we're down to only a 10% chance of catching the problem. And again, lower and lower as the probability of rejection goes down further. So to summarize, my advice to you today is don't use intuitive statistics, but do use the statistically and mathematically correct approach, which is using the OC curve. If you want to learn more about correct statistical sampling of foods, I recommend two books by the ICMSF. That's the International Commission on the Microbiological Specifications for Foods, Book 7 and Book 8. You can find out more at icmsf.org, or you can also check the math yourself by using the binomial distribution function in Microsoft Excel or your favorite statistics program. This has been my thoughts on microbiological sampling, part two. Thanks for listening.